you know, let's uh, get right to our guest now, I guess, because I'm sure, you know, she had a way better weekend than all of us running a fantastic time in the third tone meter at the Dash for Doobie, 952.33, and that's Jenna Hutchins. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Hi. Thank you for having um, me. Yeah, no problem. So first question up, you know, how are you feeling after that performance this weekend? What, what kind of ran through your mind um, and kind of break it down for us a little bit? Yeah, um, I felt really good. Uh, this was my second meet of the season. I opened up the weekend before and I did um, like a, a 1600 and an 800, but uh, this is my second meet of the season. So it's still relatively early on, but um, I went to the Dash for Doobie actually two years ago and it was just a really fun meet. I enjoy the atmosphere of nighttime races and um, we were just, you know, really grateful to have a track season this year. So I was really excited just to go out and see what I could do early on in the season. And um, although it didn't go exactly as I planned, um, I was still really happy with, um, I thought it was a pretty solid performance for pretty early on in the season for me. And I'm just looking forward to see, um, seeing how I can improve at the end of the year. Awesome. And, you know, you mentioned it right there, only the second or second meet of your season. Um, what were some of the things that you felt you could improve on to, to even drop that time even more? Obviously, you run faster in the past, but like great starting point, right? I mean, but what, what can be improved on and how can you continue to push the, the boundaries and the barriers? Yeah, I think for me, getting um, back into track season again and really focusing on um, just staying consistent, more consistent with my splits instead of maybe falling off a little bit more that second mile. And then also really just trying to um, keep mentally strong throughout the whole race and just, you know, like keeping that that same pace going. Sometimes it can be hard. Um, you know, there was a lot of great competition in the meet, but there was no one either right behind me or in front of me for me to like chase after. So sometimes that can be a little hard during the race just to keep that consistent pace going. It can sometimes be easy for me to just get in a comfortable rhythm and maintain that. So I think one of the things for me to work on and um, just grow off of is just to continue to push myself and, um, you know, make those tougher circumstances even when no one may be right there with you. I really love your heart, Jenna. You just really know how to get after it. And at least you know that kind of about yourself that you can kind of learn from those experiences and really, you know, just push forward with that. And after you broke the outdoor 5K national record, you took some time off during the indoor season. What were you focusing on during that time? Yeah, um, at the beginning, I really just took um, a week completely off and then just a week of some like light cross training before I got back into any running. Um, I just enjoyed the holidays, and then after that, um, I've been doing pretty typical stuff, um, just some base training work, really was able to work on, um, since I didn't do any indoor, getting longer, continuing with my strength work, um, and just continuing to try to improve and just really build up a, a lot of energy and a lot of um, excitement for this outdoor season. And like we mentioned before, you just competed in your second meet of the season, so you still have a long way to go. What are some of the goals that you have in mind as you're starting to put these meets underneath your belt? Yeah, um, I think I don't really have any specific times in general. Um, at this point, I think I just want to continue to have fun with it and try my best because I always have my best performances when I just focus on um, having fun and enjoying myself. Um, specifically, I think, you know, I can still always continue to work on, like I mentioned before, pushing myself and staying consistent with my splits. But um, my main goal for this season is really just to have fun and then just continue to progress throughout the season and um, end on a strong note. Well, Jenna, it's been a process with you. You've obviously gotten much better as the years have gone on. This past cross country season was a major year for you. Uh, you didn't lose at all. And, and coming off that 5K, you set a national record. So the microscope on you is a little bit bigger. There's a lot more people watching you. There's a lot more people offering their, their thoughts on, on your races. What's it been like to deal with some of that um, impact of maybe the added coverage or, or some of the things that um, just come with having success? Yeah, um, I know sometimes it can put a lot of pressure on people um, if they're a little bit more in the spotlight or receiving more attention. Personally, for me, I try not to um, really focus on that a lot. 
and just really stay true to myself. And, you know, I'm not on social media a lot. Um, I'll post a little bit, but I think I really just focused on, you know, like doing what I love, which is running and not getting caught up in all of the extra attention. It's always nice being able to receive extra coverage and just know that your hard work's paying off and it's being noticed by others. But I think really for me, it's just focusing on um, staying true to myself and um, just doing what I love every day. Yeah, that's uh, great to hear and obviously very understandable. Um, you know, moving to coaching and, and really the people in your life, you have a great circle around you, your parents, your coaches. Um, one person that's been around you for a couple of years has been Joan Hunter. She's one of your coaches, if not the, the coach that's leading you ahead. Um, can you talk about her influence on you over the last year or so and, and what, it's, what kind of value she's brought to your training? Yeah, for sure. I think, Joan, I am so grateful for her and everything that she's been able to offer me. I started working with her at the beginning of my sophomore cross-country season. Um, we were just having a lot of coaching changes in our high school, and me and my family and I just really wanted to find um, just a real stable and um, consistent form of training. So um, we were lucky enough to be able to find her, and she was fortunate enough to help us out. I think for me, she's just really... Um, you know, really been able to show me like what type of quality workouts that I need um, to be beneficial and just to help me to keep improving. And she also introduced like a lot of new things that I had never seen before. And for me, always mixing it up and continuing to try new things is one of the major things that helps me improve. So I think keeping things mixed up, she's very understanding. And, um, you know, since we're not in the same state, um, you know, she's very nice to be um, like we have really good communication, I guess, um, through texting. Um, there's like an app that she can um, help download my workouts through. So I think just constant communication and, you know, continuing to give me those workouts that keep me improving and just being a positive role model in my life. She's made a huge impact for me. You took part in that video for us um, about Women's History Month and, and the women that impact you and um, thank you for that. But also, I kind of want to follow up here. You know, NCAAs was just a couple weeks ago, and you're, you know, probably starting to search and look at colleges and things like that. What was it like watching NCAAs indoors and cross country? And what were some of your big takeaways from that meet? And what were you most excited to watch? Yeah, it was incredible. Um, I was just, I think those championships in general, even since um, when I was just started running, um, I've always loved watching those championships. It's just such an exciting atmosphere and seeing all those, you know, runners, all that hard work being put together into that meet. And also just like the team camaraderie that they show, you can really tell that, um, you know, they really put a lot of hard work and effort into it and they're really supportive of each other. So it was really amazing to see like the other athletes being supportive of not only themselves and their teammates, but also other teams. Um, and then just being able to really see, um, you know, the emotions afterwards of, you know, races that went well. And even, you know, people that could have improved, it was good to see their take on it too. So I think it was all just a really exciting and, um, you know, just cool experience to watch. For sure. Corey, did you have a movie yeah. question there? Yeah, for sure. All right. So, uh, Jenna, I always talk in this podcast about my entertainment um, preferences, movies, TVs. Brian and Olivia always give me a hard time. I don't know why. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, uh, do you have a favorite running movie uh, and why? why? Why would that be your favorite? Um, probably my favorite running movie would be um, Spirit of the Marathon. Um, and I think for me, it's because it has a lot of runners that, um, I look up to in it. Like Dina Castor is one of the people that they focused on in it. And I followed her for a really long time. I've read her book and I even sent her a letter that she responded to when I was little. So, um, I had a personal connection with her. And so it was really fun to get to see that movie. And then also along with having like professional runners, it also had some, you know, just like amateur athletes in there as well that, you know, were just trying to complete the race. So I think seeing the two different perspectives of, of that was really inspiring too. That's a great movie choice right there, actually. 
<laughs> so Jenna, so Jenna, you and I have actually been talking a lot about food uh, through Instagram, essentially, and you have done a great job of just kind of sharing the different foods that you bake and that you cook throughout the week. How's your cooking game right now? Anything whipping up in the kitchen this week? What can we expect from you on Instagram? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I enjoy a wide variety of things. Um, I, me and my mom really enjoy baking. I actually just made some granola last night, um, which is always good. But uh, yeah, I just enjoy experimenting with new recipes and, you know, fueling for success is always one of the really important things for a runner to do. So just getting to experiment that and it's just like a fun bonding time for me and my family. What's been overall your favorite like thing to make? If you had to like say one thing, like one thing that's been like kind of like you made it, you tried it, and it's now like a go-to all of a sudden. Uh, well, for dessert, we actually there's this um, I've had it on my Instagram story before, but it's like a blackberry crisp. Um, it is actually from it's actually Allie's recipe off her Instagram, but um, we tried it and it was really good. It's just like it's blackberries and blueberries, and there's like um like a crumble that you put on top and bake in the oven, and we like to have it with ice cream for dessert. Um, every once in a while. So that's probably one of our favorites. We were surprised by how good it was. <laughs> that sounds this... so good. Sorry, Brian. So good. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, I'm just going to say it sounds so good. Yeah. And food in general, for me, I love. I also like anything <laughs> that's in front of me. So I agree. <laughs> um, Jenna, we've asked this question uh, a bunch of times to guests on our show, but I wanted to offer it to you. Obviously, you are a, a, a very exceptional distance runner. But if you had the chance to run another distance in track, you know, one opportunity to maybe go down, uh, what would you do and why? For like, like a faster race? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a sprint um, race or something. Not not the 800, because we know you run that, but like the 60, the 200, 400, something like that. Um, probably the 200, actually. I um, I like that one because it's uh, I can actually I can actually sprint the whole thing um, without <laughs> slowing down. But um, I do actually enjoy like working on like my turnover and things like that because I do have like a little bit quicker stride than normal. So. Um, I just remember um, in the past, I've always really enjoyed like 200 repeats. They're just something fun that I like. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, Jenna. Well, I think that's all the questions we got for you. Anybody else have any more questions for Jenna? Are we, we all good here? Awesome. Uh, Jenna, thank you so much for joining us uh, on online. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, and I'm sure we'll be in touch more throughout the season. So best of luck with everything moving forward. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, tell Rick we said hi. Yeah. I will. Bye. <laughs>